everyone, we're continuing on in Colossians chapter 1, verse uh, 13 and 14. Love, do you want to read for us verse 13 and 14? Then? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even forgiveness of sins. So we, we looked at how we are delivered from the kingdom of darkness. That's a past tense thing. Um, and, and so we shouldn't have a victim mentality or think that the devil is, you know, also powerful. And, you know, a lot of Christians continuously just talking about what the devil is doing and how powerful the devil is. And, you know, the devil's on my case. And very few of them are focused in on uh, th what God is doing in their life. You know, it's like as if God is non-existent or they believe in the devil more than they believe in Jesus. Uh, and that's a lot of uh, Christians, you know, I'm talking about there. Uh, but this is showing us that we have, past tense, been delivered, set free, removed from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of Jesus. Okay. But if we look at this, then, you know, how do we correlate this with how there are so many Christians who seem to be under the influence uh, of the enemy? under the power, under the, 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 the control even sometimes, under, you know, they're, they're experiencing things in their life which are from the kingdom of darkness and that's what they shouldn't be experiencing, you know. So I think it's important for us to kind of ask that question. Do you want to answer it for us? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, who delivered us from the power of darkness. I think one of the major issues is just so many Christians do not realize that this is already a done deal. Mm -hmm. And because they think that the devil is such a, a big factor in our lives, um, he is a factor in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, you know, you, they're empowering the enemy because they're, they're, they, they think that he's all powerful mm -hmm. when he's not. God's all powerful. And, but they give so much credit to the devil and, and they're not focusing, they're not magnifying the Lord. You know, scriptures and Psalms especially say, magnify the Lord with me. That's talking about in your mind, making God bigger, making God bigger than your problem. A lot of people make the devil bigger than whatever they're facing, than whatever challenge that they're, they're going through. And, and that's the thing, that's the trick, is one of the keys to living in this kingdom of light, living in this, this kingdom of Jesus is to magnify God and to really, I mean, what you're doing is you're putting faith in God and not in the devil. You're choosing to say, hey, I believe God is bigger than the devil. And you're choosing to see that he is big. And because you're in him, you've been taken out. You've got to see yourself as out of that influence and in under his influence. Absolutely. And it comes back down to your focus mm. um, and what you choose to believe. I don't think we as Christians realize how powerful our decisions mm. are. Because God can make you 100% free, but if you choose to believe that you're in bondage, mm. it's gonna, you're going to experience that. Yeah. It's as if, as if uh, you maybe were in extreme poverty and someone came and gave you $100 million. million. <laughs> yeah. And you could, if you, if you choose to say, oh, that, that didn't really happen, mm. or that's not really mine, they're going to take it away again. Mm. Nothing in your experience is going to change, even though you're now the wealthiest person on the planet. Mm. Or if you want to look at the example of, um, if you believe, oh, nobody really likes me. Um, mm. I'm just, you know, whoever I meet, no one likes me. Mm. No one's ever going to mm. like me. Then even if you're around people who truly love you, all you're going to experience is rejection. Yeah, because you're attracted, really. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're not being rejected. and Because you're, you're, because the thing is, is you're rejecting yourself. Mm. And so, you know, you kind of like seem to attract it then. Mm. And you even like uh, uh, seem to discern or perceive rejection even when there isn't rejection. Yeah, even when it's, when, when it's not true. So when it comes to being, being delivered from darkness mm. and translated into the, the kingdom of light, I think so often we don't realize it maybe, but mm -hmm. we're still seeing ourselves as being uh, under oppression, being, like Shane mm -hmm. said, victims, um, being victims to the enemy, being victims to other people's decisions. Um, mm -hmm. I, for many years, felt like I had no control over what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, wh whatever I was feeling was too strong for me. Mm -hmm. 
to stand against. So I was a victim to despair and I was a victim to hopelessness and I was a victim to fear and anxiety. And I was a Christian, so I had already been delivered from the power of darkness and translated mm. into the kingdom so, of his So you son. were experiencing all those negative things as a Christian, mm. but you didn't realize that they actually have no legal right in your life. Exactly. They have no, there's no actual root to the control that they have, the dominion over you. Exactly. And as soon as you realize that, you got set free from it. And now it's never, it's not that I never have an anxious thought or a feeling come to me, but now when I have an overwhelming feeling or a thought of anxiety come, I don't have to take mm. it seriously because I know this is not who I am. And even though I might be feeling it for a few minutes or a few hours, it's not who I am and it's not true about me. So I suppose what we're really saying is, is boiled down to Romans chapter 12 verse 2, which says that we are changed or transformed by the renewing of our minds. The problem for many Christians, you know, there's only ever two problems for anyone in the world. Number one, you need to get born again. That's the answer to your problem. Yeah, you're not born again and you need to get born again. You need Jesus. Or number two, you've got Jesus, but you don't know what happened to you the moment you received Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. So many Christians think that they're a new creation living uh, under um, old kingdom, uh, kingdom of darkness uh, principles. Whereas we've got to see ourselves as new creations living in maybe a kingdom of darkness, but by new covenant regulations, if you want to put it like that. You know, we're not of this kingdom that we're living in. And there's a kingdom of darkness that, that's seeking to destroy us and seeking to destroy the world and all this. But hey, you know, we, we've, we're on the winning side. You know, we, we, we're living by the rules of another kingdom. And that kingdom is the kingdom of Jesus. And in that kingdom, there is power over all the power of the enemy. And when we realize it, when we wake up to the, the, the reality and the truth of who we are in Christ and what we've got in Christ, then you start to walk in victory and freedom and experience the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. And something that we can maybe all do today and this week as we meditate on these things mm. is ask the Holy Spirit to, through the Word, reveal to us what the kingdom of God this new kingdom of light and his dear mm. son that we're part of now, what that looks like, what does this mean? What, is, what does that kingdom look like? What, is a, what does a citizen of that kingdom look like? And mm. what, are we, what are we meant to experience? And um, thankfully for us, the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth and the word is so full of amazing truths about that. That's good. Awesome. Have a great day. We'll Bye. see you tomorrow.